Hello everyone, I am Bharat Singla and welcome to Learn Competitive Programming with Codechef. If you desperately want to master competitive programming and get your hands dirty in data structures and algorithms, then this is a one-stop destination for you. Every week, we upload problem explanation from Codechef's contests, conceptual videos on various programming paradigms and also conduct live interactive sessions. But before we start off, there's a reminder for you to hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet already. Great. Now that you have subscribed, let's get started. So guys, today we are going to discuss the problem gasoline from Code Chef's November lunchtime. The difficulty level is easy medium and there are none prerequisites. Basically, I'll walk you through every concept required to solve the problem. So let's get started. But before we begin, do you guys know that Codechef also conducts free live sessions on Unacademy where we try to teach every possible topic related to competitive programming? We have lists of courses for all skill levels like beginner courses such as Introduction to Programming in C++ and Java, Intermediate courses like a course on Number Theory, Recursion, Basic Data Structures, as well as Advanced courses like Dynamic Programming, graph theory, segment trees, and many more. Here, you will be taught by top coding experts who are IUI medalists, ICPC world finalists, and have worked at companies like Google, Flipkart, LinkedIn, and basically all those tech giants. All you have to do is register yourself at an academy by clicking this button, start learning here, and choosing your goal as competitive programming. But this isn't just it guys, you can also go for the plus subscription where you get additional benefits like individual support and full-time doubt solving. You also get the access to the problem sets curated by these coding experts for each topic. And to add the icing to the cake, there are mentors who are going to resolve all your queries and they are 6 star and 7 star coders as well. So subscribe to an academy plus guys, don't miss this golden opportunity of learning from the best in the world and kickstart your programming journey today. You can use the code Bharat27 to get an instant 10% discount as well. So hurry up guys, subscribe to an academy plus. So now let us have a look at the problem statement and uh, let's check out what it says. So there are n cars on a circular track of length n, where the ith car has a clockwise distance i minus one from the first car. So if n is equal to six, this is the arrangement and uh, let's say i equal to four, so what's the distance of car 4 from car 1? It is 1 units plus uh, 2 units plus 3 units. Fine. So to generalize, we can say that uh, i minus 1 units. Now, you can uh, initially fill the ith car with at most fi liters of fuel and paste ci coins for each liter. So two arrays will be given. So let's say if, uh, if we take i equal to 1. So what's the cost to fill the first car? Uh, we can fill at most 2 liters uh, initially. And for each liter, we need to pay one coin. So for two liters, we have to pay two coins. Fine. Now we are given that after that, after that, you can choose one of the cars and start driving clockwise. And any car spends one liter of uh, fuel per unit distance. Fine. So one liter of fuel per unit distance. Basically, to travel one unit, it needs a uh, one liter of fuel. It's also given that when you pass through uh, another car, you steal all its gasoline irrespective of the fact that how much gasoline it currently has or what is FI. Uh, since a real life scenario is given here and it's also given that initially we can fill at most FI liters. So we ourselves somehow assume that the capacity of the tank for the ith car is FI. But no, the capacity is not mentioned anywhere in the question. So you can say that the capacity is infinite. The only thing is that initially we are just constrained to fill at max FI liters. Fine. So that's why whenever it passes through another car, irrespective of any other fact, you steal all its gasoline and fill the uh, fuel in your own tank. Fine. Now we have to fill the cars with the minimum cost in such a way that it is possible to choose a car and travel a distance in clockwise. Basically, uh, we have to somehow fill all the cars with uh, some fuel, taking care that it is less than or equal to FI, such that we can choose a car start driving it clockwise and reach back to its original position basically cover a distance of n fine so now what we have to do is we have to optimally fill all these cars such that their combined cost is the minimum fine and uh, you can also say that once you choose a car 
the other cars just act as a uh, filling station or a petrol pump uh, and they become stationary right so if let's say i choose uh, this car to start off fine so i somehow have to bring it back to its original position so what i can do is that uh, i can let's say fill it with 6 liters so it will come back to its original place right or i can fill it with 4 liters fine so it will go to this uh, car then this car then this car then then this car fine but now it's uh, 2 liters deficit right so what we can do is i can uh, add 2 liters to any of these four cars so that when it uh, passes through them it will take the 2 liters from them uh, and then it can continue its journey back to its original place so there are many ways you can do this and you need to find the minimum combined cost of uh, filling all these cars so these are two straightforward observations that we can make and perhaps they are the only observation needed to solve the question so the first observation a very straightforward observation is that we uh, no matter which car we start with we have to travel a distance of n and come back to its original place right and for one unit it takes one liter so can i say that i somehow just need to distribute these n liters of fuel into the cars optimally because if i'm distributing n liters into the car when a car is going to pass through them it's again going to take it from them so in the end a car should have only n liters of fuel to come back to its original place so i can safely say that if i distribute n liters of fuel into these cars it will be able to come back to its original place and that i have to do optimally to minimize the cost fine and now the second observation is that to minimize the cost what i can do is i can fill the cars with the less cost per liter right so uh, according to these observations i can say that if n is equal to 6 the array f is this and this is the array c so what i can do is i can first fill the car with this uh I can basically fill the first car because it has the least cost per liter, basically the minimum of this array. So I can first fill car one, right? And how many liters can I fill? I can fill two liters, fine. So I'll fill two liters, but it needs six liter to come back to its original place, right? So then what I can do is after filling this car, I can fill this car because now this is the second uh, cheapest car, right? The second cheapest uh, cost per liter. So I can then fill this car and so on, right? So these are the two observations. Uh, that are needed to solve the question that is first to distribute n liters of fuel into these cars we don't need anything like n plus 2 liters or 2 n liters why because we have to minimize the cost and only n liters are required to come back to its original place so simply distribute n liters of fuel into the cars optimally then to minimize the cost we have to first fill the cars with the less cost per liter basically the less uh, c of i fine so now uh, from this it should be very clear that we are going to follow a greedy approach to solve the question. So these are the two observations and now let us move on to the approach to solve the question. So the first step is to sort all the cars based on their cost. So if these are the two arrays given initially, what I'll do is I will sort this array C first. So it becomes 1, 2, 9, 9, 9, 9 and then I will arrange this F array based on this C array. Now why? Why do I need to arrange this as well? Now note that initially we are given them, uh, we are given these array in order. Basically, for the first car, this is CI uh, and this is uh, FI. For the second car, this is CI and this is FI. But after we have sorted this, we have disturbed the order. So to again uh, somehow maintain the order, what I'll do is I'll arrange F based on C. So first sort C and then arrange F based on C. Now how? Like here, the fourth car, uh, the fourth car has a had a two, right? And now after sorting, it has become the second car. So what I'll do is I'll take the fourth element of F as well and then uh, make it the second element. So now again, this order is maintained that the fourth car had a uh, two as uh, C and uh, four as F. Now it has two as C and again four as F. So basically arrange this F array based on the C array after sorting C. Fine. So this is the first step so that at each point we get the car with the minimum cost per liter. Fine. Now, uh, now what we have to do is we can iterate on this fuels array, right? So iterate on the fuels array until n liters are consumed. Fine. And now simultaneously calculate the cost as well and finally print out the cost. So in this case, uh, what we are going to do is we are going to uh, first take two. Fine. So we have filled two liters basically. Then we are going to go to four. So we have filled four liters. And now at this point, at this point, we have uh, reached something like n. Uh, greater than or equal to n right n was 6 and 2 plus 4 is 6 so we have uh, consumed n liters right so now what we are going to do is that uh, here we are going to stop 
and how are we going to calculate the cost it will be like first we went to 2 and we filled 2 liters what was the cost per liter it was 1 so it will be 2 into 1 so 2 then for 4 the cost per liter was 2 so 4 into 2 8 and then 8 plus 2 so the cost in this case comes out to be 10 fine so we are also going to simultaneously calculate the cost now here you may think that uh, this is not the correct way right why because uh, according to this approach uh, it is saying that go to the first car right this was the first car so go to the first car and then uh, fill it with two liters so it will go to this uh, car then this car and then uh, what we are going to do is we are going to fill uh, four liters uh, and this was the fourth car so basically now take the fourth car and fill it with four liters right so whenever one is going to pass through four it will take those four liters and continue its journey back to its initial place but now note that it does not have enough fuel to reach the fourth car itself right it is one liter deficit so basically it won't be able to reach the fourth car and if it's not passing through or reaching a car then how will it take its gasoline right so from one it's going to go to two then to three but here it doesn't have any fuel left to reach four at least right only after reaching four it can take its gasoline and come back to its uh, original place but here we are one liter deficit so this approach basically doesn't work right but uh, no this is uh, this approach actually works now why because this algorithm is just telling us the minimum cost required uh, to distribute n liters of fuel right this is not telling us which car to start from fine so basically what i'm saying is that what if we start from the fourth car right so if i just erase this so if i start from the fourth car so it will go uh, one step two step three step then four step and uh, now note that since it's passing through the first car and we also filled two liters in the first car so now it has two liters more so here it doesn't have zero liters instead it has two liters left so it can safely continue its journey back now why is it guaranteed that we'll always find a car such that we can come back to its initial place now this is because if we start from one car and if we are def deficit of let's say one liter or two liter so that we cannot reach the second car itself so in that case it is guaranteed that the vice versa basically starting from the second car or some other car will always be excess right if from one car it is deficit then for the other car it will always be excess right so if from one we cannot reach here then it's guaranteed that from four we are always going to pass through one and we also know that since we have distributed exactly n liters there must be a way that we can somehow come back to its original place because for n units we need n liters and we have distributed n liters that is what our algorithm tells iterate until n liters are consumed so we are going to distribute exactly n liters and that is also going to guarantee us that we will come back to its original place now what if what if instead of four here we were given five fine so now our algorithm has to do a little more work so first again it's going to go to two so it will uh, take the first car uh, two was the fi for the first car so it's going to take the first car and fill it with two liters fine and then it is going to take the second car and now note that we don't need to fill five liters why because n was six right so now here we are going to take the basically the minimum of the distance left as well as its fuel capacity so here the distance left was just four for six minus two and uh, now the capacity is five so we are just going to take four why because we don't need seven liters right we only need six liters so in any case four will become five will become four and then uh it's going to continue its journey back and this will also guarantee us the minimum cost right so first it's going to start on the fourth car then it's going to move one step two step three step four step again going to take two liters from the first car and then continue its journey back uh two more units fine and reach its original place so this is how the approach goes and now let us look at the implementation in python so first here we are going to take the input for test cases and then run this loop uh test cases lines fine so first we are going to take uh, n the uh, number of cars then the fuel array as the input as well as the cost array fine and now we have to sort this array cost and now note that we cannot simply sort it because then we won't uh, be able to uh, take care of the fuel array so we have to do a little work here like i'll just uh, brief you what this code does it actually just uh, initialize this array named sorted indices of the cost and what it's going to do is it's going to give the sorted indices basically it will not sort the elements instead it will give the sorted indices right so if the third element is the smallest in the cost array 
then the first item of this array will be 3 right so now this will basically help us uh, in retrieving the thirds uh, in the third value of the fuel array fine now we are also going to initialize this variable distance left that will initially be n right and answer is equal to 0 the cost that we are in the end going to print out so now I'm going to run a loop for car in sorted indices c so now car dist uh, is another variable that will be the minimum of the distance left as well as the uh, fi of that car so basically fill the car uh, if the distance is uh, if there's a lot of distance left then simply fill it uh, till its capacity and uh, then if the distance left is uh, small like the second example we saw where the fi was 5 but the distance left was only 4 so in that case simply fill it till the distance left then the distance left will be subtracted and then answer plus equal to the car disk that is the distance that car can cover or the fuel that we have filled multiplied by the cost per liter of that car and at any point if the distance left is zero then we can break out of the loop or even if we don't include uh, this if clause here in any case distance will be equal to zero then here min of fuel of car and the distance left will be zero so distance won't be decremented and answer won't be incremented right but still it's better to include uh, this F clause basically it will just help in improving the efficiency of our program. Finally, we are going to print out the answer that will be the minimum cost. And now let us run it on the sample inputs. So I've already pasted it in the custom input section here, and it is giving us 333. That is exactly the output that we want. And now let us uh, try to submit this code and hope for an AC. So I've already pasted the code here, and now let's hit the submit button. But don't just watch me code out the solution guys. Go and try to code it out yourself so that you gain the confidence that yes, we have understood the question now and it also enhances your implementation skills. And don't forget to link your uh, submission code in the comment section so that we can all appreciate your effort. So yes, we got an AC and this was it for the implementation guys.